Nutreco looks to expand feed business in Africa. Nutreco, the Netherlands-based animal feed and nutrition company, is looking to build on its existing presence in four markets in Africa. The food production giant, which operates in over 40 countries worldwide, currently has production units in Egypt, Nigeria, Zambia, and South Africa. Selling over 6 billion US dollars in animal feed and nutrition products each year, Africa accounts for 2% of the firm's total revenue. However, Africa is a key growth region for the company, says Jose Valilon, Corporate Sustainability Director. Nigeria is projected to be the third largest country by population size by 2050 along with India and China, he tells African business. When you think of those types of population density and scale, there are going to be major challenges to meet. We see this as a growth geography and we have done so for the past few years. In Egypt, Africa's largest exporter of tilapia fish, Nutrico, supplies feed to the industry. In Nigeria, it services the market for freshwater fish and shrimp feed from a base in Ibadan. One of the biggest drivers of business is the demand for high-quality feed on the continent, Villalon says. Most freshwater fish species, red for commercial purposes in Nigeria, are fed food waste. This has a detrimental effect on potential yield and it may also cause biosecurity issues. Along with the spread of diseases, a major concern for the industry is that antibiotics in animal husbandry may contribute to antibiotic resistance in humans. The WHO predicts that by 2050, more people will die of a simple bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics than die of cancer today, says Valilon. For this reason, Nutrico is committed to assisting their clients to eliminate the use and dependency of antibiotics for animal growth promotion and to preemptively treat animal sickness. The company, which is owned by SHV Holdings, one of the world's largest private trading groups, will not use antibiotics that are deemed of critical importance to human health by the WHO. A lack of oversight and adequate regulation in the animal feed sector is a concern for the creation of multi-microbial resistance and spread of diseases in Africa, Validon says. In terms of productivity, the right nutrition and feed can more than double the output of an animal or animal product. For example, a cow in Holland will produce 9,000 liters of milk per year to below 4,000 in Nigeria. Working with small freshwater fish farmers in Nigeria, Nutreco has been able to double the output, reduce the amount of feed needed by 30% and increase animal survival rates by 40%. Nutreco is expected to open two new factories in Africa this year, Valilon says. There you have it guys. That was a brief news update for you. Do you like what you hear? Then make sure you drop us a comment to let us know what other topics you want us to talk about in the future. And also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also share this video. Click on the subscribe button to join the Business in Africa community. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video. Bye bye. Africa's private equity industry in serious stress. Africa's private equity industry has been partly shielded by the impact of COVID-19 due to the continent's relative lack of cases. The dominance of development finance institutions and its prior exposure to crisis. But partners fear that the pandemic 
impacts on exits, according to a report. The COVID-19 response report by the Oxford Business Group and the African Private Equity and Venture Capital Association found that the Africa-focused industry raised 1.1 billion US dollars in funds and arranged 81 private equity deals totaling 700 million US dollars in the first half of the year with financials, IT, and consumer discretionary accounting for 49% of deals by volume. The pandemic sparked renewed interest in education and healthcare. The latter accounted for the largest share of deals by value at 24%. The AVCA says that the prominent role of development finance institutions DFIs, in Africa's private equity industry offered resilience with some DFIs introducing strategies to shield their investments from the pandemic and most investments already armed with strict environmental, social and governance criteria. Other DFIs have pulled their expertise into working groups to respond to the crisis. Furthermore, the AVCA says that African fund managers were better able to provide support and enable continuity at portfolio companies. Having already dealt with challenges in Africa, including shorter supply chains, more debts, and less inventory. This built-in preparedness ensured that many portfolio companies were able to absorb some of the initial shocks in global supply chain and local demand, says the report. Nevertheless, the pandemic has exposed some of the African private equity industry's inherent weaknesses. Weak exit environments, political risk, and currency fluctuations have all been exacerbated by the pandemic, and African governments are unlikely to offer financial assistance to distressed companies. The uncertainty has led fund managers in sub-Sahara Africa to close their funds at smaller sizes during the pandemic, with some anticipating a reduction in capital inflows, particularly from European commercial investors and Asian institutional investors. An AVCA survey in April found that 49% of respondents expected a 6 to 12 months delay in capital deployments. Over 90% of respondents listed the financial impact of the pandemic as their top concern, with over half concerned by a potential global recession and around 45% fearing a dip in consumer confidence. That has impacted confidence around exits with 57% saying that exit opportunities were the greatest challenge in Africa in the small or medium term. 13 exits were recorded in the first half of 2020 compared to 25 in the first half of 2019 and 45 for the year. Exits are further complicated by travel restrictions which are impeding the ability of investors to carry out due diligence, says AVCA. Nevertheless, several high-profile exits have been concluded this year, including the $288 million acquisition of payment company DPO Group by Dubai-based Network International in July and the $500 million US dollars acquisition of remittances firm Senwave by World Remit in August, suggesting that investors retain faith in the longer-term potential of compelling Africa-focused companies.